Welcome back to Zombie Recaps. Today, we will talk about a horror movie from 2012 titled Scary or Die. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all our latest and most exciting content. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A guy who enters the house at night. He turns on a PC and types scary or die com in the search bar and finds a video titled The Crossing. He clicks on it and it buffers as the screen fades to black. In the next scene, a girl named Connie is sitting in the front seat of a truck. She is sandwiched between the driver named Buck and the other guy Keith. Keith pulls a jar out of the back and starts drinking something Connie asks. What it is she feels a strange smell book explains that it's homemade alcohol. Keith asks Connie to drink some well loosening her up and she starts kissing Buck. Keith puts her hand on his crotch. After a while she asks them to stop for a bathroom break. They park at a rest stop. Connie gets off and heads to the bathroom book follows her. In the meantime, Keith buys snacks at the store. He starts talking with the cashier if he's ever lost at a coin toss. Keith soon realizes that the man doesn't speak English very well and starts to say racist things to him as he pays. When he is paying, he notices that Buck and Connie are making love in the bathroom. Keith heads out to the truck to eat his snacks. As he is eating Buck and Connie come out of the bathroom adjusting their clothes they sit in the car and drive. As the car drives off, we see the shopkeeper dead at the entrance of the store with blood on the floor. The trio drives off to a barren terrain as Connie complains about Keith's smell. They park in the middle of nowhere and Connie asks what they are supposed to do. They get out of the truck and head to the back. Buck removed some sheets to reveal two men tied up and laying down in the truck. Connie asks if they've been there the whole time and asks Book to let them go. Buck makes them sit up and removes their gags. They are both immigrants Book tells them that they are trash and are ruining his country. One of them named Jose Clairvox tries telling them that he is a tax-paying citizen. In the meantime, the other old man tries to run away. Keith pulls out his gun and shoots the old man. Connie cries over his body and tries to wake him up while Buck slashes Jose's throat as he begs for mercy. After that, Buck tells Keith to take care of the bodies as they wonder where Connie went. Keith starts peeing on the newly dug graves of their victims. Connie returns with a shotgun and holds it to Keith's head. She demands the keys to the truck and knocks Keith over with her gun. When Keith tries to get up a hand reaches out from the grave and claws one of his eyes out after that zombies start to rise from graves. First they kill Keith and start to eat him after him. One of them gets Connie but Buck saves her. But he doesn't save himself and becomes zombies food as well. Connie gets a chance to run away. After that we see two soldiers sitting on a cliff. They see Connie running in the distance. And they shoot her considering that she might be a zombie. They leave her for the animals and move along. In the next scene, we jump back to the man on the PC. The person clicks on another video titled to John's Lament. This video takes us to a bar in a city a man has seen drinking heavily in a bar. Then he gets up and starts walking out of there. As he lights a cigarette, he walks down the stairs to the street. At the door of the bar, he sees a couple making out and he starts staring which makes the other guy angry. The man keeps walking down the street until he reaches a store. He buys a flower from the store owner and walks to an apartment complex. He reaches his door but hesitates for a moment before opening it and then gets inside. He puts his flower in front of his dead wife's picture in a pot and walks out to the terrorists for a drink. He lays awake all night imagining her around him. In the morning he lights some incense for her as her ghostly apparition stands watching. After that he heads to the mall where he follows two young girls around until a guy asks him if he needs help, to which he refuses and walks away. At night, he is sitting on a bench. Some girls passed by him. One of them gets abducted by a man Tanjun tries to help her but gets pushed away by the kidnapper. The kidnapper forces the girl to get into his car. The man manages to throw his phone in the gas tank as it speeds off. He sits on the sidewalk and takes out his laptop to track his phone. He starts following the tracker all around the city through streets, tunnels and parking lots. He finds the car in an old lot near the river. Some thugs are trying to steal the car. They scare Tae Chung off with a pistol and he runs away. As he is about to leave he finds a person stumbling in the alley. 
From the distance, he watches a man brandish a knife over an unconscious woman's body. He realizes that she is the same kidnapped girl. He cleverly approaches the man with a rock and hits him in the head causing him to fall in the river. After that he makes sure the woman is all right and he drops her home. She thanks to him for saving her life. He advises her to call the police but she tells him that she can't do that because they will send her back to where she came from. As he is leaving, she runs after him with his jacket and a note inviting him to a party the next day. She kisses him and insists that he must come. He agrees. Meanwhile, the girl's friends walk over to her and take her back inside. In the next scene, he is lying in bed imagining his wife standing on the balcony he spends the next day wandering around, bringing fresh flowers and drinking on his balcony as usual. He is tossing in the bed when he finds the party invitation on his side table and decides to go. The next day he goes to the place. The young woman greets Taechung. She gives her the flowers. She accepts and takes him inside where she performs an odd ritual along with some of her friends. The ritual turns into an orgy. We see a couple of dead butlers in the halls with blood dripping down their throats. That tall man is walking down the hall with a bag he reaches the woman's door and pulls weapons out of his bag. Inside the house, the women suddenly reveal their fangs and start to bite into Tijon's neck. It is then revealed that they are actually vampires and the man outside has the name Van Helsing written on his bag. Then we are again taken back to the computer screen where the person clicks on another video with his burnt hand. The video title is remembered in this scene. A man driving down the highway is pulled over by a cop. The cop tells him to put his hands on his wheel and checks his driving license. He asks if he's drunk but he denies that the cop is about to walk away when he hears the noise in the trunk and asks the man to open it. He unwillingly follows the orders and the cop goes back to look inside. Cut to the next scene. We see the same man in his bathroom. He's mutilating a dead body in his bathtub. After that he washes up, gets dressed in a nice suit and puts the body into a bag. He writes a note to get payment for the murder job and leaves it on the desk. After writing it, he sits down on the sofa with his feet on the table and smokes a cigar. He's looking into the dead man stuff. He finds a satanic symbol that he doesn't understand. After a while he puts the body in his car trunk and starts driving on the highway. Then he notices some noises and checks to find nothing unusual. While driving, he sees a weird apparition that makes him swerve on the road. This leads to the earlier mentioned incident with the cop. The man pulls a gun out as the officer checks the trunk but surprisingly he finds nothing and lets him off with a warning. The man then parks the car to look into his trunk but only finds the old satanic metal in the note. He gets confused and then he starts listening to loud breathing sounds. It makes him scared and he instantly runs back to his car where he finds the dead man in the front seat. The dismembered parts of the dead man are now restored then the dead man suddenly disappears making him believe that he was just a figment of imagination. Just as he lets his guard down, the dead man reappears behind him and cuts his throat off. The next video chosen is called Clown. It starts with a guy named Emmett spending a day at the beach with his little brother Andy and girlfriend Kelly. He is playing football with him and scores a goal and he runs off to find the ball under the huge deck while Emmett rubs sunscreen on Kelly's back. As he is rubbing, they see a disoriented woman standing in front of them under the deck and he hears a kid crying for help. He freaks out and runs to Emmett M reassures him that there is no baby there. As they are about to leave two girls show up in a car and ask Emmett to sell them drugs. He sells them some of the drugs with instructions to contact him only during working hours. He also gets angry when they pay with a check. After that he comes home where his mom is busy decorating the house for Andy's birthday party and asks Emmett for help to which he hesitantly agrees. She asks him to look after the kids during the party. After that we see Emma dealing drugs on the streets with Kelly. They keep selling the drugs till late at night afterward. They go back home during the party. Emmett remains asleep in his room with Kelly. His mom knocks on the door and tells him that a kid has gone missing. She tells him that she is disappointed and asks him to pay the clown while everyone looks for the missing kid around. He enters the kitchen to find the clown is finding something there. He tries to stop him but he appears to be a stubborn guy. Emmett kicks the clown out of his house. But the clown attacks him on his lawn and bites his leg. Kelly asks me to let him go as the clown wanders off. Kelly dresses his wound. She hopes that the clown didn't have any diseases. She tells him that she'll take care of him. After dressing his wound, they make love. Then we see a bone lying in front of the fridge in the kitchen. In the morning, they're dealing drugs as M limps around. A couple of boys come over to buy drugs in a car. 
suddenly Emmett vomits all over them. After that Kelly takes him home at home. His mom asks if he's okay and tells him that a couple of police officers are here to ask him some questions about the clown and the missing kid. He goes to see the cops. He tells them that a clown bit him and ran off. The officers get into a stupid argument and it frustrates him. He brings their attention back to the real problem. They argue over stupid questions. Kelly yells at them as M tells them that the clown is suspicious. After they leave Emmett examines his bite mark in the bathroom and is shocked to see how bad it looks at night Emma dreams about someone breaking into Andy's room. He goes to check on him in his room and he asks if he would ever hurt him and it reassures him that he is never going to hurt him. And then he screams as Emma turns into a clown, and it wakes up in terror to realize that it was just a dream. He finds Andy to be fine in his room. Emmett is surprised to see that his face is turning white. He tries to shave it off with a razor, but ends up cutting his face. He really he says that he is becoming a clown and runs away leaving Kelly and his mom in a deep shock. His family contacts the police and puts up flyers to find him. But he decides to stay hidden and hides his face with a rag. He wanders about in tatters and faces utter hunger all the time. He wanders into stores just to look at the food back at home. His family is in great distress and worried for him. One day he lurks outside the window and watches them from the bushes, but Kelly closes the curtains. So he breaks in at night and gives Andy a balloon while he's asleep. And it becomes sad and as he knows what he's fighting is inevitable. He takes his rag off and it reveals that he has turned into a terrifying clown with white hair. He tries to open his mouth that is sewn shut and he succeeds. After that he calls Kelly she tells him she has news but he just asks her to tell Andy that he would never hurt him and hangs up. He falls asleep on the garbage. He dreams about Andy having a picnic with a clown in a forest at night. The clown tries to hurt him with knives. At that point, Emmett is woken up by two men trying to steal his shoes. He gets angry and eats them. Back at home, they get a strange note at the door and a clown of ducks Andy. They call the police as the clown takes Andy to the woods, and he thinks the clown is Emmett and lets him take him to the forest at night. There he spreads a picnic table and takes off his mask to reveal that he is someone else. Then Emmett comes out of nowhere to rescue Andy and manages to let him escape from there. Emmett kills the clown and starts to eat him as Andy watches from behind the trees. He realizes that Andy has seen him and walks over to reassure him that he would never hurt him. And he says that he's scared. This makes me sad and he tells him to go back to home by saying that he died rather than hurting his own brother. In the morning, Morning, he is looking hungrily at some kids when the two cops show up and shoot him to death as he points his toy gun at them. Afterward, we see some kids filming Kelly as she is taking her baby for a walk. She pushes the camera away from her face. The guy then plays the last video that carries the title Lover Comeback. In this video, we see a woman telling the viewer that she never thought that she'd find true love in love, but she did. She is walking across town and keeps telling that it's the most beautiful thing she has ever experienced. She then discloses that her grandfather was an amazing guy as some people claim that he used to do spells. He did one on her when she was a kid. He gave her a necklace with the soil that their ancestors are buried in. She wears it to keep herself safe. She says that her lover has changed and turned into an offensive person. She goes on telling how soon she realized that he doesn't love her anymore and he was cheating on her but she stayed by his side because she truly loved him and eventually one day she was choked to death by him. He put her in a trunk and left her in the woods. She says that she knows he is a flirt but her love for him is true. After walking around for a while she reaches his car in a parking lot. Inside the car, his lover is making love with some other girl she moves towards them and they notice her flesh rotting off her face. She reveals that she has made a promise to herself that she will spend her life with him in the life after death as well. She concludes that she is very determined to keep this promise because her love for him is pure and true. After the video ends he closes the website on the computer inside the room. The woman from the last story appears and closes the door and the movie ends here. That is all for this video. I hope you liked it, if you did, give it thumbs up. Subscribe to Zombie Recaps and turn on notifications so you can get notified by YouTube when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.